Starting off the new year right with some huge news regarding Frostpunk 2. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and just recently the developers have dropped their first trailer for gameplay of Frostpunk 2, and let me tell you, it plays a lot more than just a simple city builder. Welcome back, good to see you all here, and yeah, this game looks like it's going to be way bigger than the first in terms of scale and presentation and budget, which means a lot of good stuff for us. In fact, this game looks like it's going to be more of a civilization type game, or something along the lines of maybe Hearts of Iron with conquering the Earth and fighting against other factions than it is just the city surviving. Now, some of the things that they've showcased here are very interesting and very, very uh, unique to, well, Frostpunk in many ways, but also unique to other games that seem to be wonderfully blended in here. Like, for example, the systems of having a democracy or a dictatorship, and of course, the tried and true methods of having your people make demands and then trying to meet them in order to then keep hope alive. Now, this with it being on a much larger scale, seems like it'll have a larger population management taking place in the early 20s and focusing a little bit more on oil and other resources, almost making your city something along the lines of a nation in Anno 1800 where shipping in and out supplies are going to be just as important, although the city uh, acts more as a nation state and thus you have a lot more power over the citizens and also your neighbors too. Now, no sign of any sort of military units or whatnot so far, but it certainly is implied that there's going to be some sort of a takeover of the world, or at least what exists of it after the giant storms of the first game have wiped the world clean. And it seems like it's going to be focusing a lot more on laws and presentation for districts and different types of maybe systems of control, different government types. I don't know, I'm just really excited. With how good Frostpunk was and how it stood apart from so many other games, we've seen many games that are like banished now, that old medieval style city builder, and Frostpunk as well, with games like New Cycle Around that try to balance both post-apocalyptic worlds in the real uh, modern day and also some that are in the future and in the past, but I don't think anybody's done it as well as Frostpunk has with its original game and DLCs, which do a great job of setting up the story in the world of Frostpunk, and now we'll have to see what Frostpunk 2 has in store for us. So some unfortunate news. First of all, I don't see a release date here, and I don't know exactly when the game will fully be released, and that's actually a good thing too, because of course, if the developers are not yet ready to launch the game, then they are not giving themselves a release date, which means they have plenty of time to fix bug bugs and put in polish and other things before it comes out. Hopefully we get a full release date on a specific date, and not just necessarily an early access game that can be frustrating and, and tiresome, with new content all the time, especially in a city builder where you'd have to start over time and time again for new stuff added. But the good news is it'll be out on consoles and it'll be out on Game Pass Day 1 and of course out on Steam and Epic and GOG. So if you're on PC or console, this one's going to be available for everybody. And I must absolutely to the highest degree encourage everyone to get the original Frostpunk and give it a try or a playthrough if you haven't already. And if you have, now would be a great time to get back into Frostpunk and all the DLCs. I could not be more excited, and I did not expect that we would just be getting a random glimpse at the gameplay. Now, I think we, of course, need to see a lot more here. It is just too easy to speculate, and of course, we can break down all of these images, which we'll do after our first look at the trailer. So join me now as we go for an uninterrupted look at the trailer, and then I'll be back to break down some of the things that we all may have missed during the first look. Let's go. Are you listening? Stuart? The great storm wiped the world clean. Let's take it back! But how? The steward will choose our path. Stuart, build us a better home. A home for everyone! Stuart, we still lack so many things. People! are starving. More people, more mouths to feed. They treat us like animals, left to suffocate. We need a place to work. Who else will feed our families? Stuart, this smaller will kill her. Stuart! Where are the horns you've promised? 
Can we all receive equal rations? Hospitals are not a place for experiments. Free education for our children. Secure and stable growth. City for the citizens. Steward, hear your people. We want a say in how we run the city. The time of tyranny has ended. Our delegates will make sure of that. Let them vote. Yes, vote. Steward! Do you hear us? Steward! Steward! What about us? What? Impossible. Steward, did you hear that? The city. The city was not... Yeah, isn't that amazing? That soundtrack, it just, when when the violins drop like that, I, I, Frostpunk, I don't know if the, the second game is going to have the same composer or musicians from the first game, but damn it, 11-bit has captured the music of Frostpunk beautifully. The desperation, the sounds in that game of the ice, you know, like cracking and, and doom closing in with the main storm. The feelings of the first game are still with me today of surviving my first city and of course we've all uh, whoever have beaten the game you know did better our second or third time and uh yeah i i can't believe how they've captured that feeling of desperation and wanting to do better and to do more always in frostpunk well anyway that music is absolutely astounding for the sequel and there is a lot of stuff to look at here primarily the look of the game and one thing that I'm really wondering about, and I've been trying to look for answers, and of course more things will come out over time, is what's going on with all that glowing in the city? At first, I thought it was perhaps cars driving around, like headlights and stuff. I was like, oh no, with oil do we have fuel, and do we have combustion engines and driving around? Uh, I'm not sure. It seems to be uh, in different images of the city, though, that there's yellow lights or like almost like the color of fire, and then also red lights. And it, uh, I don't know, it must have something to do with the different types of uh, government types you can choose. Perhaps you can be a monarchy or a dictatorship or, um, you know, maybe you can be a democracy as they showed voting and laws being voted upon. There could be a lot more here than just a singular scenario like at the start. There could be multiple different factions, the sandbox mode, and much more. Hell, maybe we could even get multiplayer, although I don't expect that. And there's a lot of things to speculate on. But one thing is certain, they're keeping the best and most important parts of this game of having to make difficult decisions. Make that clear right at the beginning when they keep calling for the steward over and over again, which is you, the governor, the mayor, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, yeah, having to choose who gets to eat and who does not, or uh, how much uh, power or uh, energy or fire or heat will be uh, distributed to certain areas that's another call on you as well and everything playing out seemingly like hexagons within the city and not necessarily a circular city either i believe it was at uh, maybe the game awards or the summer games fest one of the two they did showcase a little bit of the city and show that it's kind of more of a sprawling area outside the initial uh, generator the the main furnace keeping the city alive it does seem to have that initial ring around that uh main generator and then spreads out almost like a an octopus or something like that so really cool uh just visually stunning again i hope to see more detail by zooming in they certainly are trying to capture more of the scale here in this uh, trailer by trying to zoom way out and show you how big the city can be but it doesn't feel as survivally now at the moment as it did in the first one it felt like maybe you know 100 to 200 people trying to survive the end of the world and now it feels like tens of thousands of people coming together to reclaim it but it uh, certainly is a good change I, I, i've been recently seeing a few games for example like uh, prison architect and now being into prison architect 2 keeping the same heart and soul of the game but changing the gameplay style the art style and the graphics a bit in order to facilitate new ideas and it seems like well we're not going to be in a pit anymore like in the original games that they explain through some of the dlcs as to why they're doing that and showcasing how it gets built but now it's uh, much more it seems free although of course with the restrictions of you know regulation and people's needs and of course food and fuel still being very scarce and in still a very brutal and very frozen wasteland 
and that's something that I hope to see as soon as they're able to release a release date. Now, one thing that I'm hoping to see here is that the developers go down the path of hyping this up a little bit in terms of showing us exactly how it will work. If we get some developer live streams that show a little bit of gameplay, uh, gameplay and the developers explain how that's going to work, that would be the best thing, of course, because it would help to both uh, maintain the hype of being excited and wanting to play and then understanding how the game will work. And so that way, all of our hopes and dreams of something that might play out like Victoria or Anno or Hearts of Iron or Civilization, we'll see how extensive that actually is. Now, I'm sure, of course, with this game, there's going to be a lot of hidden secrets that the developers don't want to share just yet, and I think that's rightfully so. Is of course, the game is not yet complete, and there's probably a lot more to showcase in terms of how each of those systems will function if they get very detailed into micromanaging, which Frostpunk very much is, from every little bit of coal and wood and steel and food to then turning that into you know processed food in the original game and or researching with engineers and having enough workers for everything. It's, it's never a perfect balance. There are people who can play the original Frostpunk on the hardest difficulty with no pause whatsoever, and that blows my mind. That may as well be a speedrun of the highest extent. But in this game, it looks like there's going to be a lot more options and less linear uh, ways to play. And of course, with many options to change your uh, government type, perhaps there'll be different buildings too. And that opens up the door to a lot of different things. Now, based on just some of the gameplay here, again, going back to what I mentioned about hexagons, it looks like, you know, when you're building housing districts, that will be a way to house a lot of people in a small area. But I hope to see some more customization for fa uh, factories and farming and uh, conveyor belts and mining and things like that, where some of those things can go through the city. And, uh, of course, we're going to have, like, greenhouses and power and other things of that nature pr uh, provided to the citizens, with it being the 20s. Uh, even though it's an alternative history, I would still like to start seeing some things like cars and advanced technology. In the first game, they do showcase airships, or at least blimps and trains and things like that. There are large vehicles that are capable of large amounts of uh, transportation of cargo and people, and so I hope they continue that here. Now, again, no glimpse of war. I didn't see anybody with a rifle or any marching armies or military units or artillery, but it would be interesting to see a little bit of that, especially if it's coming down to two nations or city-states fighting against each other and trying to claim dominance. I'm really feeling this is maybe a, a great op op opportunity to see a Mad Max game in the future. This very much now this game feels like something where it is a post-apocalyptic uh, society or a civilization trying to then come out of those ashes and still reclaim the land. Mad Max, especially the newer one from 2015, is very much that as well. And uh, I hope to see, I would love to see 11-bit studios behind a game that's Frostpunk and Mad Max. But Frostpunk fits so many different levels, but is a game that is still, when I think of brutal, hardcore city builders where it's like, well, you know, hey man, we don't have enough tools to amputate everybody's legs. What do you want us to do? Rusty spoons or sticks? It's like, that is the decisions this game makes you make. And I, I hope to see even more of that in Frostpunk 2. All right, well, that is all I have for now with a lot more things coming down the pipe from the developers, of course, some secrets. But a few things to point out, of course, is that democracy system and how that will impact things with voting. And, of course, a lot of the things to do with how that energy is going to work flowing around that city. We have still a few things to focus on and to figure out. There are a few more images out there and some things that I'll share with you in the future. But let me know your thoughts on the game down below. What do you think is other great hardcore city builders and would you like to see another hardcore playthrough of Frostpunk on some of the higher difficulties the DLCs and the main game itself let me know down below and <laughs> maybe after today fire up and or purchase Frostpunk and get into it because it is stellar when it comes to city builders survival city builder indeed it is and this one now a survival nation builder I didn't think I'd ever say that but it's true all right thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you all next time thank you very much